This animation provides an overview of the Windscale Piles decommissioning project and illustrates an innovative top-down approach to reactor dismantling. A large opening will be created into the top of the reactor for access to internal core components and removal of waste materials. An array of long-reach, high-payload, carbon fibre robotic arms will be used to remove materials from the reactor. The Windscale Pile reactors are adjacent to the Sellafield facilities shown here. Pile 1 and Pile 2 are nearly identical reactors, separated by a spent fuel storage pond. The scope of the project includes the reactor buildings and associated facilities except for the pond, chimneys and a laboratory building. Removal of materials from the Pile's reactors has commenced with the retrieval and packaging of isotope cartridges in Pile 2. This was an important risk reduction activity and its completion demonstrates the ability to plan and perform physical work activities in a hazardous nuclear reactor environment. Isotope cartridges were removed through the charge face using a long-handled gripper retriever and heavily shielded retrieval equipment. In Pile 1, fuel and isotope materials will be removed from blocked channels that could not be cleared following a fire in the reactor in 1957. Over 9,000 cartridges remain in the reactor. Characterization surveys have established that their condition ranges from nearly intact elements to ash-like piles of debris. These materials and the reactor structures include significant levels of radioactive cesium, cobalt and other isotopes, and they must be removed using remote technologies. A containment structure will be installed over a portion of the concrete bioshield and an access slot will be cut using diamond wire sawing equipment. The centre divider plate and burst slug scanning gear equipment will be removed using special purpose shears to provide a clear access pathway to fuel and isotope channels from the discharge face. On the charge side, push rods will be inserted through existing charge penetrations to support retrieval actions on the discharge side. A robotic manipulator will retrieve fuel and isotope materials from the discharge side of the reactor. Fuel and debris will be placed in waste baskets that will be removed through the water duct stub shaft. A unique fuel channel retrieval tool will be used to access and retrieve materials from inside the reactor pile. This tool deploys grippers and scoops through a series of extension rods, or Kelly bars, that are stored in a rotating magazine. During the past year, prototypes of these tools have moved from concept to creation. Full-scale testing has demonstrated that this equipment is capable of withdrawing the wide range of material shapes and forms that will be encountered in the reactor. Filled containers will be lowered onto a cart that travels along the water duct rails. Containers will be lifted through the water duct stub shaft into a separation area where large debris items and intact elements will be separated from ash and smaller debris. These material types will be separated to facilitate their eventual encapsulation. Filled liners will then be fitted with a lid to control contamination and placed into a buffer store facility. These liners will be packaged into 500 litre drums, filled with grout, placed into a shielded transport flask and removed for long-term storage until a final waste disposal facility is available. Pile cap concrete will be removed using a variety of techniques such as diamond wire sawing and diamond sawing. The entire pile cap will be removed in a sequence that ensures that the remaining materials are supported and can be safely removed. Concrete, structural steel materials and the heavy 150mm thick steel inner thermal shield plates will be removed and lowered to a waste packaging station. Various tools will be used to remove the 150,000 pieces of graphite in each pile. 
as much as practicable, these tools will remove and package the pile in bulk forms to minimize handling. The top layer of cast iron blocks will be removed and placed in waste baskets by a magnetic lifter. For blocks that do not have fuel or isotope channels, a solid block lifting tool will grip them and remove them from the rest of the pile. Most graphite blocks have fuel channels and will be removed using the bulk removal tool shown here. This lifting fixture has forks that will align with the fuel channels. As materials are removed from the bioshield and reactor pile, they will be placed into waste baskets and lowered to a waste packaging facility. Assays will be performed in a shielded area with low background dose rates and waste baskets will then be packaged into waste containers. Grout will be added to packages that do not contain graphite and lids will be installed. Intermediate level waste, ILW boxes, will be removed and transferred to a new on-site interim ILW storage facility, where they will be stacked with an overhead gantry crane. Graphite blocks will be removed and the BioShield interior will be left empty. Interior surfaces of the BioShield side walls and floor are lined with steel thermal plates, which were activated during reactor operation and will be remotely removed using diamond wire sawing or thermal cutting equipment. The piles decommissioning project is expected to generate four categories of waste. Intermediate level radioactive waste will be stored on site until a national repository is available. This will include approximately 700 NIREX approved 4 meter boxes and 170 NIREX approved 500 liter drums. Approximately 800 half-height ISO freight containers of low-level radioactive waste will be generated. This waste will be transported to an approved facility such as the disposal facility at Drigg. Approximately 7,200 cubic metres of high-volume, very low-level radioactive waste will be generated. This material represents a very low risk to the environment and the public and may be disposed of either at an on-site location or other approved site. Exempt or clean waste that can be disposed of at a local landfill is estimated at 30,000 cubic metres. Once all activated components are removed and surfaces decontaminated, the pile's reactor buildings and support facilities will be demolished using conventional demolition techniques. The building foundations will be backfilled and brownfield conditions will be met. Once this end state is achieved, the project will be considered complete.